Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to take a look at the Irish Setter brand Elk Tracker 880 hunting boot. Okay, let's take a look at the boot's features from bottom to top. Starting out with the sole, this is the Irish Setter Bullseye Air Bob sole, deeply lugged. It's got some uh, very uh, aggressive patterns here in the lugs. One thing I'm a little concerned about, and we'll see this uh, when we take a look at the boot after some use, is I'm a little worried that with the depths of these lugs, we might get some uh, dirt buildup in there, but that remains to be seen. Overall, though, looks like a really solid sole. Uh, I've got a layer of cork right in here. Uh, the welt is a Goodyear welt with uh, stitching through to the sole. So far, it looks like the stitching is done really well. I'm impressed with the quality of that. Um, the boot is entirely waterproof. Uh, we'll do some testing on that as well. I will wind up uh, waterproofing these with some snow seal. Uh, and then moving along the triple seam along pretty much the whole stitching of the boot. Looks really solid, looks well done. It should hold up really well. Uh, you can see the tag here that there is Gore-Tex on the inside and that helps with the waterproofing. A little bit on the uh, eyelets and lace hooks. They are they look pretty solid. Uh, they are branded, so each of the eyelets says Irish Setter, and each of the lace hooks has the uh, icon of the Irish Setter dog, which is a really nice uh, design detail touch. Uh, the leather is uh, kind of a darker brown leather throughout here, the heel and across the laces, and then on the infill here more of a textured brown leather, a little bit redder in those areas. Just a really nice look. Now let's unlace these and take a look at the inside of the boot. Okay, now one thing about this boot, and one of the reasons that I bought it, it's a 12 inch boot, meaning the uh, from bottom to top it's about 12 inches high. I will be using this for walking through water. Uh, in some areas in the Boundary Waters canoe area wilderness. Getting in and out of a canoe, I want to have my feet stay dry, so I wanted a taller boot. Uh, the, the gussets between the tongue and the boot, you'll notice that they don't go all the way to the top, so it remains to be seen whether when we have this all laced up, whether that's going to keep a lot of water out all the way to the top, or if the waterproof is going to stop right there. I don't mind getting a little bit of water seeping in, I just don't like having my feet soaked. So the tongue is really well padded. Uh, you can see there's a nice lining in here. Now this uh, shoe being the Irish Setter 880, if we can focus in on that. Uh, the 880 is their lowest level of insulation in a boot. They do make a boot that has no insulation. Personally, even in the summer, I like to have a little bit of insulation uh, just for comfort. Uh, so you can see it's 200 gram Thinsulate insulation here. It does uh, insulate all the way through. There's a nice quilted lining here that feels uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, the top is pretty padded, and that padding goes quite a ways down. So maybe the top a few inches here is very well padded, should be very comfortable uh, in terms of long-term hiking. I'll be using these for hiking, uh, not so much for hunting, but um, I'll be using them for kind of trekking, hiking, canoeing types activities. The, if we can get all the way down to the bottom there, good, 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 the, um, the sole, and actually I can pull this out here, the insole comes out, it's a memory foam insole, it's got a little bit of thickness to it here, uh, and so far I can say that it is really comfortable. I have only worn these boots inside the house so far, so uh, a little later in the video we'll show some, uh, some testing outdoors, and I'll have some more reactions after I've had a chance to use these for a while. A uh, little bit of a pull-up loop in the back here. I don't tend to use those very much, but they are nice for pulling these taller boots on. One thing I noticed that's different about these boots from the pictures I saw online is that online this particular boot had a brass emblem right here with the Irish Setter brand written on it. I don't actually mind that that's gone here. The boots that I have don't have that uh, on it. I don't really care that it's not there. I, in fact, I like it better to have it a little plain. Uh, so uh, otherwise, you know, just the Irish Setter brand here on the heel. And that's the boot. So uh, let's 
Let's take a look at how these boots fared in some, uh, some hiking tests and uh, in long-term comfort. So these are my boots after a few days in the Boundary Waters canoe area. They're holding up really well. So far I've been through some portaging, canoeing, uh, some hiking, some uh, stomping through the, the backwoods here to get some firewood. They've, they've held up really well, they're comfortable, they're breaking in really well. Uh, two things to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, I did wax these boots just before I left on this trip. So some of the, uh, some of the white stuff that you see on the toe there, that's just a little excess wax that I didn't get melted all the way in. One other thing is that I, since I waxed them the day that I left, really, I grabbed the boots and left and forgot my boot laces. So I did happen to have some uh, some thin rope that I was able to make some laces. The boots do not come with these bright orange and yellow laces. Um, but what I wanted to do here, I've done some... Uh, some stomping through some mud puddles and things. I uh, haven't really got them completely wet yet, so let's give that a quick try and make sure they stayed waterproof. They're advertised as waterproof um, out of the box, but of course I always like to wax my boots to make them a little more so. So let's, uh, let's give this a try. Here is close to where we came in. Uh, came into our campsite. It was uh, really windy that day. I actually was not able to land here due to the wind. I uh, had to pull in a little bit further down. But um, one thing you might do with this is, as you're landing, uh, pull the canoe part way up and then step into the water. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So the water here, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good spot to land. There's a pretty good gravel base here. Uh, it's fairly shallow as we walk in. Um, so right now you can see how high up the boots I am. Uh, no water coming in. I can feel the uh, I can feel my feet getting cold. Um, so getting a little bit of a uh, little bit of temperature change inside the boots, but uh, I don't feel any water coming in. So so far so good. Um, yeah, uh, these have been holding out really well. Um, the only thing that I haven't really loved about them. The heel is a little flat up through here, so meaning it, the heel comes more straight up than I'd like. I'd like a little more of a heel cup there. Uh, so for long distance hiking, I'd say probably not. Um, but for this type of work, um, or, or camping, where we are doing mostly canoeing, uh, some pretty rough trekking through the woods, uh, mud puddles and whatnot, they seem to be working pretty well. Okay, now I'm out of the water. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, the reason you're standing in the water when you're getting in and out of the canoe is that the canoes are fully loaded. Uh, you damage the canoe if you drag them up onto the shore loaded. So uh, most of the time we'll uh, pull up to the shore, step out into the water or a nearby rock if you can. But a lot of the time you're stepping straight out into the water, unload your canoe and then lift your canoe up. Um, especially if you're using a Kevlar canoe, you don't want to damage those on the rocks. So uh, now, because I mentioned that my, uh, my ankles were getting a little cold, I thought, well, I wonder if it's actually leaking a little bit. So uh, with this boot, I, uh, I did uh, open it up uh, and to check and see, and uh, you know, definitely no water in there. Uh, just a, got a little bit cool because of the uh, temperature of the water. It's, uh, it's September right now in the Boundary Waters. The water's pretty cool, so I uh, just felt that uh, Cool temperature coming through the uh, through the insulation, and again, these are not uh, heavily insulated, just a little bit. So uh, definitely stayed dry. Um, stay, definitely will stay dry long enough to get in and out of a canoe. Haven't spent a lot of the time in the water in them yet, but I uh, don't intend to. Uh, so you can see they're uh, they're getting pretty well broken in. They've been through mud, a lot of brush, so they're getting a little scratched up. Uh, you know, definitely dirty, but uh, holding up really well. So, all in all, I'm really happy with these boots. Comfort is great. Uh, they hike really well. They seem to be just about the right uh, level of insulation for a cool September. 
don't know if I'd wear these in the heat of summer, um, but I, again, I have worn insulated boots in the summer before and they've turned out fine. Um, the lug pattern working really well. Let's see, I, I don't see that we've had a whole lot of uh, dirt building up on the lugs. Oh, a little bit there, not too bad. Nothing, no big rocks stuck in the lugs, anything like that. So they're working out really well. Uh, waterproofing is great. Uh, again, I did wax them. I used a snow seal product to, to wax the boots before I left. Um, let's see, one thing I didn't mention before is that uh, in terms of uh, stepping, stepping over slippery rocks, uh, I've had boots in the past that were very slippery on wet rocks. These ones did all right. Um, the rocks that you can see in front of me, they're wet. Um, they're, uh, they're not smooth, so, uh, so they're not as bad as a smooth wet rock would be, but these boots hold on really well. Um, where you get into a little bit of trouble is uh, sometimes around the shores like this. You get some, uh, a little algae or moss growing on the rocks, and if it's wet and it has that organic matter on the rock, it does get really slippery. Um, the treads on these are made of just a little softer rubber than um, maybe some uh, logging boots, things like that. So they do dig in a little bit more, they get a little more grip. Uh, I did appreciate that. I could see though that if you're stepping over some uh, wet, smooth rocks, you really want to be careful. Uh, almost no boot will do that except maybe a felt sole boot uh, would be good in those conditions. Uh, and, yeah, and that's not something you'd want to hike with. So, uh, great boot. I'm glad I got them. And uh, thanks for watching.